Hi, I'm Jerry Mikulski. I'm in Portland, Oregon, and I've been story threading Unfinished 21. Um, and I've been doing that using this strange mind mapping tool called the Brain. Uh, this video is to explain to you kind of what this Brain thing is, how it works, and how you might make use of it, because you can go browse my Brain for free on the web. Uh, so here's the conference. Here's Unfinished 2021 and its theme, Midnight, uh, in my Brain. Every node, every little element here in the brain is called a thought because, of course, it's called the brain. Uh, and when I click on a different thought, first, if I, if I mouse over it, it's highlighted. When I click on it, it rotates into the middle. And so in, in the brain, uh, in this form of the brain's, the brain's display, there's always one thought in the middle. Uh, you'll notice that here it's, we're, we're very close to midnight on the doomsday clock. Um, I already had the doomsday clock in my brain. Uh, there's various notions of doomsday and doom and doomsayers and disasters that wipe out humans. Uh, we can go there. Uh, but if I go back to the doomsday clock, <clears throat> I will find our conference right here. Um, this is last year's, and I decided to make a lateral link. Uh, you'll notice that, that the brain only lets you link up from this little circle or gate, down from this little gate, and left, not right. And it turns out that this little up left uh, up, down, left dance is perfect for me. Like, it'll, you, you'll see, it allows me to express things that are really hard to express in something that's only up, down, only hierarchical, uh, especially if the hierarchy means one thing must have multiple things under it, but can't have multiple things above it. So here you'll see one thing has lots of stuff above, lots of stuff below. The brain doesn't really care. It's not checking for references. Uh, so here's last year's uh, uh, conference, which was virtual, and here is the talk I gave at last year's conference. This little fave icon over here is actually a link. It means anywhere you see an icon, a little fave icon uh, attached to a thought, that is a URL to a website. Typically, uh, you can tell from the fave icon this is going to be a YouTube link, uh, this is going to be uh, a Google Doc, uh, this is going to be a LinkedIn page, somebody commenting about my, my talk, etc., etc. And, for example, in this talk, I quoted Anand Giri Daradas from his letter to all who have lost uh, in this era, uh, a talk he gave in 2016, a TED talk he gave in 2016, which I thought was excellent. Uh, he said, I heard you, but did not listen, which was really interesting and important to me. So this is kind of how I use the brain ongoing all the time. So the file, the file you're looking at is the same file that I started 23, almost, it'll, it, we're a month away from it being 24 years ago, uh, when I was a tech industry trends analyst and a little company came by with a piece of software called The Brain. This is it. It doesn't look that much different from what it looked like 24 years ago. Um, and so I, uh, the, the inventor, Harlan Hugh, opened his laptop and started showing me his brain. Uh, and I, I had been weirdly writing an episode of the newsletter that I wrote back then about mind mapping and about link management, bookmark management. And I was a tech analyst, so I cared very much about what companies were competing against what companies in the startup space and all, all of that kind of stuff. So this turned out to be the perfect tool. I began using it. I began using it a lot. And I found it more expressive than other kinds of tools. And then a really weird thing happened. I kept using it for apparently just about 24 years, but I kept using the same data file. So the file you're looking at, which has in it a thought called we're in an epidemic of not listening, um, is the file that I started 24 years ago. And you'll see that a screenful can get a little complicated. This is kind of complicated. Ignore the columns on the right I haven't turned them off. I can turn off that view, but I like it. These are sibling thoughts. These are, these are common children of some of the parent thoughts of the current active thought. They're not as important as everything else on the screen right here, but, but more or less you can start making sense of, of a screenful at a time, even though at this point to have 484,000 thoughts, nodes in here, connected by more than 880,000 links, these little things, all of which I put in by hand over these 24 years, meaning even though it's called the brain, it has no AI, there's no machine learning, it never makes a suggestion. Originally it had a feature that would let you crawl a website uh, or crawl your drive, and I just didn't want to pollute the namespace in the brain because it has a really nifty fast search feature. So if I want to find uh, neural networks, I just type Neuronet and I can find out every thought in my brain that has that that, set, that little string, Neuronet, 
uh, suddenly shows up and I can go jump to uh, articles about neural networks, for example, uh, which is under, uh, this is a, a habit I, as I started filling a brain with a lot of things, I created a bunch of habits, one of which was when things get crowded under a thought like neural networks, I always create a little, I spawn a thought called articles about neural networks and I color it yellow just to draw attention to it. So articles, uh, sorry, thoughts that are, that are colored yellow just mean, hey, look over here. Uh, you've noticed I also have thoughts colored purple, and the purple ones are more opinion. So I believe that we are in an epidemic of not listening. And you'll notice I just clicked down here. This is like a breadcrumb trail. Everything I'm clicking on is scrolling off to my left here. Um, and so yellow, I, I, don't, I try not to use colors a lot because I don't want this to look like early HTML pages with blink tags, but I use yellow for, hey, there's a collection of things that might be interesting here, and I use purple for uh, opinions, for stronger sense. And this opinion thing is actually really important because my brain isn't just a directory of stuff. This isn't just a listing of startups that happen to make uh, web storage or buddy lists or whatever else. I've got a lot of those, and in fact, I have a lot of those. Um, but it also contains opinions about um, how, you know, how things are going and where things are headed. So uh, I have a whole bunch about the pandemic that we're still in. Here's the Delta variant, which is much more contagious, starts a fifth wave of coronavirus in the summer of 2021. July 2021 looks like a brief respite, and then we're back into uh, the miseries of lockdown. Uh, so there's a whole bunch. You, you, you can see that there's a whole bunch of things here, including you can figure out pretty quickly what my politics are. So... I believe that the GOP, the American Conservative Republican Party, has become a suicide cult. And we can go uh, deeper there, but I'll head back into safer territory with, uh, with Unfinished uh, 2021. I also realize that when I'm story threading using my brain, I'm trying to tell stories through the brain by using this woven context as my, as my display, as my story thread, um, I go pretty quickly sometimes, and here the magic of the pause button and rewind and scrolling back and forth will help you a lot. So you can slow me down or, or change the speed of my presentation to 0.75 so that I slow down and talk more normally, whatever else it might be. But, but uh, use the tools so that you can actually um, go in and, and, and hear me carefully. And then I will be offering lots and lots of links into the brain so that you can wander around yourself. And what, I, what I'd like to do also is show you, um, this is the brain on my desktop as a desktop app. When you follow a link to my brain in the wild, when I send you a link to my brain, uh, it's going to look like this. And I have no say in how this looks when you get to it. This is the web server at thebrain.com that serves up my brain data. And periodically I click on the little, uh, let me go back to the brain, periodically I click on this little cloud icon and that synchronizes my brain data so that any changes I just made get freshly sent to the brain itself. So you're seeing the fullest, latest version of the brain, and I've just set this one to complexity, but I want to show you a couple things. Uh, first, I don't use this notes field very much at all, and th there's uh, links in here, and there's also notes. I don't really use it to write notes, uh, and so a trick that you might want to do right up front, see down here the little chasing arrows icon? Click on that, and then pull this bar down. I have the display scrunched enough that you probably won't see it. One way to do this also is simply to uh, click this arrow and get rid of the comments below, but then you won't actually see the URLs that are connected to the thoughts. But now you'll notice that this looks an awful lot more like the brain that I'm using. And then to jump through the brain, you don't have to traverse, you don't have to go to uh, the Kinevin framework and then uh, wait for the server, and sometimes you have to be a little patient because the brain server is not the fastest server in the world. Here's Kinevin. Uh, it was created by Dave Snowden, who should be in here um, anyway. Uh, you can just leap through the brain by clicking in the search field and saying Dave Snowden, and you don't have to um, you don't have to type the whole thing. I maybe I should have said more than Dav, so I think it's Dave Snowden. Might be David. There we go. So here's Dave Snowden. No relation to Ed Snowden. He's the creator of the of the Kinevin framework, and. Um, there he is, now he's shown up. And apparently I first met him in 2008 at a dinner uh, that had him as a featured guest. He's quite brilliant. Um, 
So this is how you can use my brain. If you copy this URL and send it to someone else, that will work. They will be able to go to this URL. They'll still have the funny split, uh, vertically split screen, uh, but this will give you some, some clues about how to get around in my brain. If you're interested in creating your own brain and would like to try it out, go to thebrain.com, uh, download and install the personal brain. That version, the free version, does most of what I do. If you want to share it out with other people like I do uh, by using their servers, you'll wind up uh, paying them something every month. Um, and it's a proprietary tool, so I have little say in how things get displayed. But clearly, I've become addicted to a few things that it does really, really well. I mentioned that my brain is really my point of view, and, and, and I mean that. It's just one person's, one curious, observant person wandering around the world, saving stuff that matters to me, to them, uh, and then sharing it out with other people. This is not definitive, this is not exhaustive, this is not in any way meant to be official. There are many broken links and there are many things in the wrong places. If you wander through the life science section, if, if an actual life scientist were to wander through the life science section of my brain, I'm sure they'd be horrified and would help me move things around, which brings me to the, to the next point I want to make, which is I'm always looking to improve my brain, and I love it when somebody sends me an email. Unfortunately, the tool doesn't let you say, hey, this is broken, here's how to fix it, but send me an email uh, that says, hey, Jerry, I noticed somewhere that you don't have this, and I, I get a bunch of these emails all the time, but I'd love more, uh, because my goal really is to be doing this with you. My goal really is to create a shared understanding, to do some collaborative sense-making, to understand the world. It just so happens that I have this funky note-taking tool that's very visual that really works for how I represent things uh, in the world that I've been using for a very long time. So I have this massive body of work and, and having a huge history is different in kind. It's different in a way that I think is hard to communicate. Um, whenever I start a new project, I'm never starting with a blank sheet of paper. I'm never starting from scratch. Chances are uh, I know the people or certainly the topics that, that the conversation is going to be about. And if I don't, I rapidly add them and then they're there forever for me and for anybody, anybody else who comes in and shares uh, this information. Um, but working with, a, with an ongoing context has been a fantastic adventure. And I'm trying to figure out ways of explaining its benefit and, and the kinds of uh, actions and interactions it has with me. Uh, I do have a thought called Lessons, uh, lessons from Using My Brain for All This Time, uh, and it includes a really important, the brain is uh, as my extended self or mind, but it includes a really important insight that I had years ago, which is that we are an amnesic society because we don't have a shared memory, that we don't really have a shared memory. And then, by the way, we're not listening to each other. We're in this epidemic of not listening. So I hope that gives you some background on what this brain thing is. If you go to jerrysbrain.com, uh, you will find uh, some more videos, explainer videos of what this is and how to use it, and a link that says launch Jerry's brain so you can go straight into it. But it's always easier, easier to follow a specific link to a specific thought in my brain, which I'm happy to give you. Um, thank you very much, and uh, Help me make this better and send questions and build your own. Thanks.